Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today is probably my last chance to gamble my headhunter because yeah, I tried almost every way to acquire a headhunter in a regular way, that or at least in a gambling way, right? Cuz the regular way would be yeah, gather like 45 exalts and buy one on the market. Simple as that. Or you farm burial chambers, get some doctor cards and yeah, farm it like that. But I'm actually not MB Extreme if I wouldn't try to get it in another way, in a more sneaky way. And today we are going to gamble 10,000 scoring and chance orbs on shaped leather belts. So you're just gonna imagine for a second. You have 10,000 chance orbs, you have 10,000 scoring orbs, that is about 20,000 clicks already. With the other clicks that you're gonna do throughout the whole process, which will take about two, three, four hours in total, you're gonna click freaking like 25 to 30,000 times for this gamble, right? So rip my fingers already. And yeah, so the thing that we wanna achieve, right? So this is a regular headhunter you can get, right? If you're valid, you can probably get a corrupted headhunter, maybe with a better implicit or something. If you have bad luck, that's probably my turn. You get a, a ripped, a bricked headhunter, right? But if you're gonna open or at least try your luck with uh, time-worn keys, you can get a shiny, beautiful foil headhunter. But there is something you can't acquire in this kind of way, and this is a shaped headhunter slash an elder head headhunter. This is something you can acquire through chance orbing um, shaped or elder leather belts. That means that the outcome will still be the headhunter, no, nothing special on it, right? But you are gonna have this shaped or elder background, right? So, for the write-ups. Um, we have about 10,000 chance orbs for about 11 exalts, right? 10,000 scoring orbs for about 46 exalts, plus 50 shaped leather belts for about 6.2 exalts, which is a total of 30, uh, 63.2 exalted orbs with today's exalt ratio from 1 to 120. So, a regular headhunter goes for about 45 exalts, right? A shaped headhunter, also I call it the space hunter, goes for about Hard to say, but there are only two on the market at the moment, right? One goes for 75 exalts, the other is not listed in price. I checked the Elder Hunter, there is none on the market. So usually for a Space or Elder Hunter, you get about 80, 90, 100 exalts depending on the market, right? So they are twice the same, at twice the price of the usual Headhunter. And yeah, thanks to Mr. Bam Boom Beam, I always forget it, so let me scroll up, God damn it. To Mr. 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 Bomb. God, bomb. Get in your head, bomb. Okay. Mr. Bomb helped me to gather all the scoring orbs and chance orbs. So thank you very much for that. And also, he lent me his luck bringer, which is a mirror of Calandra. So thank you very much. I hope it brings the luck to me today. And we're gonna see if we're able to get a space hunter. And yes, I know this is not the first time I'm trying this. The first time was about 5,000 chancing scorings and resulted in nothing, right? Second time I tried 7,500 and one time I did 1,000 off video but on stream, right? And yeah, I got nothing. So that means I have spent a total of about 13,500 chance slash scoring orbs on shaped leather belts just to get a, a bunch of worm smolt, or how I call it, space molts, and yeah, space immortal flashes and all the other belts that nobody wants to have, right? So how is this working? Chance orb is actually ignoring the item level, right? So if, if those, uh, yeah, super knowledge players in this game will tell me, yeah, RMB Extreme, you are not allowed to go a chance orb with a, on a leather belt that is higher than le item level 44 or something, no. That, that counts on ancient orbs, right? But we are a chancing and chance orbs ignore the item level. So this could be item level one, it could be item level 100, it doesn't matter, right? With a chance orb, you can acquire every type of unique belt uh, that is actually coming from the, the leather belt, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one, a, a random map, whatever, right? I'm, I like to go for these bitch maps. You're gonna take the bitch map and yeah, you're gonna go to the map device and unlock the map or at least run it with the nemesis mod that comes from Sana level seven, I think. So you're gonna open this one and then you're gonna chance in the map because this will actually allow the, the leather belt to become a headhunter. If you would just chance in your hideout, they would, you would never get a headhunter because a headhunter is a nemesis item. 
that's why you're gonna run the nemesis mod. So what you're gonna do now, we're gonna pick up a bunch of these, uh, yeah, chance orbs. How about like, yeah, about 200 or so. Uh, we're gonna pick up, I think, three rows of, uh, yeah, leather belts. And fill it up with some scoring orbs. And yeah, this is what you're gonna do. This is what I'm going to do for the next couple of hours, I think, until my hand falls off. And we're just gonna, yeah, score everything away. Uh, or at least chance and then score everything away. So it can come everything, like magic item. I'm sure we have a rare item somewhere here. So the higher the the, the rarity, the uh, the rarer the chance is to get it, right? So becoming a unique on chance orbs is not that often, right? But for those guys that say like, hey, uh, you overrolled something, I don't care, really. Like, it's end of the league, I'm not gonna sell all these uh, rare items just because they have like maybe good stats or not. The majority of these items are like item level 80, 75, 77, 82, 78, 71. So there's not even a tier 1 belt base that uh, I'm actually scoring here, right? So nevertheless, we're gonna start right away. I think the first one is going to be a, mer a worm smalt or a space smalt. This is my prediction. And we're gonna see how many of these space smalts we're gonna get. I'm going to speed up this process. I'm just going to make the video now to like a thousand percent in speed and every time stop it when I get a unique item so you can share this wonderful moment when I get the space smalt hunter, something like that. Let's go. And we got our first one, it's the Immortal Flash. So that's actually not even what I expected it to be, a freaking space mold. But yeah, we got a space... Wait a second, is this a, an, an out of days April's Fool's joke? The Immortal Syndicate Flash. <laughs> That's, that's actually nice. Oh! Look at this! Look at this! Praise the worm smolt! Play, praise the space molt! Oh! The second space molt! Arrgh! Number three. Oh, look at this. This they are going for an insane amount of price. 10 chaos, 15 chaos, 20 chaos. I hate those space freakers. Oh, number five, I think, right? So this is a shaped gluttony with like super bad stats. Oh no.
Oh, a gluttony. A space Tony. <laughs> The immortal sin uh, flesh, right? Look at this. The immortal flesh with somehow a blizzard background. Oh wait, it's shaped. <laughs> Power, if you count everything together. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh! I like Worms Mold more than, than Immortal Flesh, because Immortal Flesh always reminds me on this freaking Diablo Immortal shit. So I'm getting just pissed when I get an Immortal Flesh. So this is the first gamble where I actually enjoy Space Molds more than Immortal Flashes. Mm, gambling is a good way to make currency. Look! Twins! <laughs> twins! The stream uh, king here. Oh! What is this? Is this equipable on iOS and also <laughs> on Android? <laughs> oh! What is this? <laughs> this is Android and this is iOS. <laughs> My old friend, how are you doing? Space Wormsy. Flesh. Haven't seen in quite a time, man. Well, actually, two minutes ago. Not funny. 
Oh! What is this? <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, this is definitely an out of season April's full joke. Oh! Oh! What is this? The Tony! Shaped Tony is back! Now we just need Space Malt and uh, Space Hunter to have a beautiful, big-looking family. I don't and I don't know anymore if I should celebrate or start crying. So hyped about my solo stuff on character until I found out I can't trade. Oh no. Rip. Hey, Tony! What's popping? What? Then we tripled it. <laughs>
I don't even know how to click anymore, man. We are... We're about to hit, hit 6,000 freak... Yeah! <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> what did I say? Okay, since my prediction with the next unique is going to be a worm smolt, the next prediction is freaking Space Hunter! Space Hunter! Of course I would like to get it. <laughs> I thought next one is Tony! I was gonna try this gamble, I'm not. Don't do it. Don't do this gamble. Praise. Wait, stop. Praise the worm smalt. I love the way I'm using the chance orbs. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> Ah! I'm getting tired. <laughs> ouch! Ouch!
I found some more chocolate for my broken soul. It's a freaking Kinder Maxi King. Look at this gorgeous thing here. Oh yeah. Die, you piece of a shit malt. I got this this insane urge to to destroy something. Yeah, Talentro, that's a good thing, yeah. But I think everybody who's watching basically is laughing his ass off. <laughs> the coincidence! This is what I get. I get a worm smolt. Ah, uh, my fingers. I'm so exhausted already. Uh, I don't even know how to sit anymore or click. It's just... Ah... Uh. This game is so trolling me. This game is so trolling me. What did I just say? What did I just say? Oh god.
Is this what I deserve? In the last couple of chances, I'm gonna be praised with some more space mods. Isn't that glorious? The last two chances. So these scorings are the rests of the... God damn it. So, uh, yeah, um, for the write-up, Jesus Christ in hell, to be honest, man. This is even worse than expected. Okay, so, I chanced away 10,000 chances in scorings on 50 shaped leather belts in the hope to get a space hunter so yeah i got a total of five tonys like shaped tonys right we have two four six eight ten immortal flashes so four of them are playable on android four of them are going to be playable uh, on ios and the last two probably a uh, spoiler for the, the wii we don't know yet and yeah, we got uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 freaking space molds. No hat hunter, no nothing. So, yeah, basically, I lost another 63.2 exalts worth of currency. So, yeah. I don't know, I wrote, uh, like, I read some Reddit threads before I started this whole chancing thing, and I, I read something about 11, 12, 13,000 is the average to obtain a headhunter. Well, I chanced away 23,500 in total, maybe a little bit more, but in the end, no chance. This is just not working out, and I have no idea. Like, I'm super exhausted, that was like... Three, four hours permanent clicking, probably more than 30,000 times of clicking. So, yeah. Ah, I don't, I don't even have words for that anymore. <laughs> if I see one more space mold, I'm going to, <laughs> you don't want to know. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. See you on the next, next <laughs> video or gambling. I don't know. We're going to see. Hey guys and welcome to a new video. So it is a little bit after 9 p.m. and yeah the new league is going to be announced or was already announced like a couple minutes ago and it is the Betrayal League. So I have absolutely no idea what is about to happen but I think we're just gonna play the video and let's see um, what it will be like. So yeah looking forward. The ancient code of life and death is broken. A devious plan of necromancy, unrelenting and frighteningly efficient. Necromancy? They call themselves the Immortal Syndicate. Syndicate? Okay, is this the new Uber Elder? I will do as you ask, so long as you spare me. What the hell is that? Is this like a card game? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, you're, you're playing a card game or what? Go on, do it. Execute. Hmm. Okay, so. I have no idea. That's what I offer. What is this? Is this reforging? Reforging stats? Master crafting rework! Finally! Hell yes! New. R Wait. Delve? Incursion? Unified high. Okay, wow, okay. Um. Rip Masters? What is this, a uh, Mirage Archer for casters?
PlayStation 4? Oh. So I... Is this mobile? Is this an out-of-date April Fool's joke? We must prove they are not. And I comes. Betrayal. Now on uh, Android... <laughs> Please no, please no. Okay, let's see what what is actually about. Okay, I'm hyped. I'm hyped, definitely. In the Betrayal League, you'll team up with Jun Ortoy to bring down the Immortal Syndicate. The Syndicate has four divisions, each with its own goals: fortification, transportation, research, and intervention. In each area, you will encounter a Syndicate member. Okay, like in all in every league. Other members can show up to aid their friends or sabotage their enemies. When the battle is complete, you must decide how to continue your Sky investigation. Sky does no I had it all planned out. How could I loot? I'm better than this. <laughs> I think I'll just execute everybody. Bargain, execute, interrogate, and even induce them to betray each other. Starve the beast. We'll not break it. Your goal is to gain intelligence leading to the captains of each division. Raid their safe houses to pillage Okay, their let, let me pause here for a second. What you're gonna do is, like in incursion temple, right, where you had like these small incursions and depending on what you did, you had uh, a different end game like that, right? So it could be the same here that you have actually... Um, like new starting points, right? And depending on your decision, who you're gonna bargain, who you're gonna interrogate, who you're gonna kill or execute, um, you're gonna have different end game bosses, more or less, right? So you can build it up, at least it seems like for me. Is this like the four guardians and the, the Uber syndicate member or something? Each syndicate member stores different item types in their safe house living quarters. High ranked members will have better items. Each division has a different twist on item movements. You will want to manipulate the syndicate, maneuvering certain members into positions that are going to be. So they switch around you. whatever you're doing, okay? The syndicate members can drop veiled items. Take these to Jun and pick one of three options for the veiled mod. Ah, okay. So they they have one additional stat that you can choose off. That's actually cool. But what is this bar here? It's like how good it is rolled. And I, well, this is a perfect roll. Like. In betrayal, the old cohort of forsaken masters have mysteriously vanished. Vanished? Einhard, Alva, <laughs> Nico, Jun, and After all these years, they figured out that vegan is bad for a human being. Zana Guess what? Over as the new masters. Their lead content has become the new master missions, including a simplified version of Beastry where Einhard will met beasts for you. This expansion contains many other features, such as master crafting that doesn't require grinding master levels, a unified hideout system, and new skills. Check out pathofexile.com slash betrayal to find out more. Okay, I think we're gonna do this. So, um, I, I reopened the site here, right? Um, yeah, my first thoughts, like, okay, we have new masters that are having the pre-leaks stuff as uh, daily quests, and the more you do, the better crafting thing you get, right? But you just don't have to freaking... What about all these daily quests? What about the missions, Sana missions, where you have additional uh, masters, right? Is it still going to be up? And you just... I have no idea, man. Okay. Immortal Syndicate and Encounters. Your Immortal Syndicate has four divisions, each with its own goals. Fortification, Transportation, Research, and Intervention. Uh, intervention. Uh, in each area, you will encounter a syndicate member. Other members can show up uh, to aid their friends or sabotage their enemies. When the battle is complete, you must decide how to continue your investigation. Okay, let's see what, what you have for us. So basically, as in every league, like once you, you know, Delph, for example, you have Sulfate in every map, right? Incursion, you have an incursion in every map. So it's pretty much the same here. So you will find one of these yeah, houses uh, and every map, and then you can start executing people. <laughs> okay, um, whatever this is, but this is definitely execution. Lovely, lovely. But I think okay, this is the interrogation, right? So I don't know. Like you, you're what? Are, what are you trying to do? Is um, pr probably you're gonna. 
player cards in that way that the syndicate members will fight each other and betray themselves. So you're gonna find out, hey, who is the leader of those pack, right? And the higher you get, the better results you get. But how do you get in this warehouse? I have no idea. Okay, let's move on. So manipulate the syndicates. There are 18 syndicate members, um, each with their own personalities, friendships, and rival rival ah, my English rivalries that change as you manipulate the organization. You will need to bargain, execute, interrogate, and even induce them to betray each other in order to fight. F as <laughs> well, okay, as exactly how I expected it to be. So I don't know which color stands for what, but. Um, I definitely gonna skip transportation because I I really hate those uh, freaking escort quests, right? So, ugh. Anyways, but I think I'm just gonna do it. Um, is this like Guardians and Uber Elder, or is it like is still Uber Elder the end game harder thing to do besides all on Delph 600? Like this is super hard. <laughs> anyway, so I think like probably uh, one of these is leading to any probably two-handed or at least like melee weapons caster thing that you can actually try to unlock like you want to have probably i don't know if, if you can enter four warehouses and get the treasure and then on top of that one more or um you can switch them around that probably hillock is maybe or leo wait a second this is maybe why is leo in here is there are all ma uh, masters in the syndicate have they betrayed us? Is this vegan? Can we finally kill vegan for once and ever? <laughs> that would be fun. No, anyway, so I'm just curious why Leo is here. Um, so can you actually get anybody here on the top layer? Or is it like preset or something? Or can you really change whatever you do that you... If you're helping Leo and kill the others that he's going to get the master of the syndicate or something? Well, we... Like, I have no idea. Like, I have the information that I just got from the video, so <laughs> no idea. Okay, Raid Syndicate Safe Houses. Your goal is to gain intelligence, leading to captains of each division. Raid um, their safe houses to pillage their supplies and uncover the ultimate identity of the Immortal Syndicate's mastermind, okay? Each Syndicate member stores different items, right? Types of items in the safe house. High ranked members will have better items. Each division has different twists on item rewards. Manipulate the syndicate, maneuvering certain members into positions that are going to be the most rewarding for you. So that means if I can choose what rewards I want to have, as I guessed on, on the top side here, um, if I'm like a melee player and I want like super good armor and like weapons and stuff, I probably can maneuver some melee type character to the top of the warehouse so I can loot all the stuff. Let's take a look at the pictures here. Whatever that is, no idea. God, the lab chests. I'm just doing the lab chest uh, challenge to complete my 4040 challenges this week. So if I see more of these chests, I will instantly vomit. So hopefully not. Okay, let's keep on going. Veiled items. Member of the Immortal Syndicate can drop items with new Veiled modifiers. Take these to Yun to unveil the item and pick from the one the three properties uh, for the item to receive. As you unveil specific modifiers, you learn the ability to craft these and the other items that can work towards unlocking higher levels version of these properties. Ah, so... The higher the bar, the more, the better it can get. But what is what I'm curious about is... Um, you learn the ability to craft these onto other items. So you're gonna rate a lot of these items to... So basically what, what I was thinking when I saw that is that... Is this a craft now when you unveil it? Because it's, it's written in a light blue, right? Same as a craft, right? So... But if you can unlock those and level them up, if you get three times the same like number of totems summoned, right? That you can actually get plus two or plus three number of summon totems if you can upgrade them that would be insane and then you craft it on some really good item wow okay i i think i'm going to make any kind of melee character with like a freaking 1000 dps val axe or something that would be huge man if you can if you can get some incre uh, like crazy what is that physical damage uh, and chance to bleeding on hit 
like maybe gladiator is the thing again with bleeding and stuff. I don't know. Like, wow. I'm just like a little bit overwhelmed by all the information I got here and have no idea uh, what I should think about it. Okay, new masters, familiar faces. As the immortal syndicate ascendant in power, the old cohort of forsaken masters mysteriously vanquished. Vanished. Uh, in their absence, Einhar, Alva, Nico, Yun, and Sana have risen as new group of masters to aid you. Their leak content, including Delph and Incursion, has been added to Core Path of Exile. Yeah, we were we were thought, uh, thinking about that Delph is going to be in Core, and yeah, seems like Incursion as well. Great, I really like that. Best Shiri has been re uh, re -imagined, imagined. God, my English. Like, sorry for my English mistakes. Reimagined and simplified. Einhau will handle the nets as you focus on hunting the beasts. Oh yes. Yeah. So you just kill them on T. Do you have to stop DPS again, or do you? Can you just blow the shit out of the mob and he will just get his net on point? Because that would be great. Because otherwise, I would skip all of these quests. Like whatever. We didn't really like uh, Bastiary at all, and yeah, we want to see. Um, if this is going to be better, but hopefully. I mean, if it says uh, he will handle the nets for you, uh, that would be great. Okay, let's let's see. Yeah, typical Delph thing. We had this for now. Um, typical incursion. Um, the thing is, what I was, uh, what I was um, thinking about is, like, once you... Shit, I lost my, my thing, uh, my mind. <laughs> Comes from gambling, I think. <laughs> okay, so uh, you have to make a ton of incursions to, to unlock the temple, right? Is there a temple now in the master sense, right? Because Delph is just Delph, you know, you, the, the, the deeper you dig, do you have these Delph bosses? Will you have the Owls Uprising amulet and stuff? Like, is it just like a one hit wonder? Like, okay, here run this Delph and try to unlock the soul feet. Can you, is there a generator where you can upgrade your stuff? Or is it just like, here is a Delph room, clear it and GG. Same as the incursion, like here is an incursion, do it and... Is it, are there mas masters inside? But here is, uh, here is this architect type, right? So yeah, we're gonna see. I hope that it's going to be uh, the temple itself. If you like progress um, on the master missions, right? So if they keep on going with this, um, if you just randomly map and then get masters to do, like one of those Five masters, basically, right? Um, can you like finish your temple? Can you enter the temple? Can you deep digger, uh, deep digger, digger deeper into Delph and so on? So hmm, we're gonna see. Okay, streamlined master crafting. We have revamped the entire process of master crafting from the user interface to the way they acquire the new crafting options. Individual master crafting options are now unlocked by completing specific content, such as incursion rooms or delf encounters, rather than by grinding master levels. Okay. Yeah, this is something uh, that we just have to see in life on how this is working. How hard is it to upgrade? Uh, where is uh, the scoring orb, for example? Where can you remove it? Is it on the top line? Is there like a button where you can just like speed up the process? Because if you're like master crafting, right? So you have like three perfect uh, or three good prefixes and you want to start master crafting the suffixes. So what you do is you slam it, uh, you see if it's good, is it good, you slam it again. If not, then save the, the prefixes, screw it off. Like, how is this going to be? You know, can you just like put in the search and you will search one out of all things, or yeah, I hope it's going to be faster. Because if, if you really want to have like 85% uh, increased armor, for example, you have like, you need to get a lot of remove, enchant, remove, enchant, remove, enchant until you get the perfect set on it, right? So I hope this, there will be an option where you can like redo and re like a, an, a different button, right? Like if you want to do this one, then you have a second button here that you do like craft, redo, craft, redo, craft, redo, something like that that speeds up the process, right? Especially for master crafting. Okay, unified hideout system. Hideouts, favor, and decorations are now shared across all leagues. Okay. You can load and save your hideout templates and share them with other community members. Share them? Can I be like, hey, I just saved my hideout uh, here, have it in Discord? I don't think so. I think share is just like, I think like 
I've never done any high dot decorations just because I'm I don't want to invest my time uh, to make a beautiful hideout and then once the league is over it's all gone right but with this function you can basically save your hideout and have it in standard as well so if this is like that uh, I will definitely take a lot of time to make one for me perfect hideout where all the masters have the right positions um and save it and just keep it throughout all the leaks, right? This is this would be very great. Um, but there is another thing. So if they remove the masters, right? The old masters, like, I don't know, Varisi table and so on. What what happened to that thing? Like Black, uh, Haku's blacksmithing table and so on, you know? And also, what about all the specific uh, hideouts? Can you still get Haku's hideout? Can you still get um, those kind of stuff, right? Because I, I just see... What is this? Freaking island? Okay, this is courthouse or something like that. Like, you know, sand temple or something. That's great, but... Will we have three different or at least five different uh, hideouts since we have five different masters? Or what about all the other hideouts? And the same thing, since you don't level your masters anymore, will you have one fixed hideout size or... Will you have like different hideout sizes throughout your progress uh, from the masters, but they don't have a progression bar anymore, right? So hmm, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. But definitely, I'm going to make a beautiful hideout. And if it's if it's possible to save and share it, then I will do it, of course. Okay, new end game maps. We have added four new maps to the Atlas of Words. These uh, new maps are fleshed out versions of fan favorite title sets, uh, tile sets from deep in Delve's Asteroid Mine. The entire Atlas of Worlds has been rearranged. Okay, this is actually what is the lava lake map tier one map map then, or is it just like those couple of maps? Chanel map level one. I think Chanel was like tier five or tier four. Then we have the Fungal Hollow map. So this is new, the primordial blocks. Isn't that like act five, the first thing uh, before you enter the, the town? And the courthouse map. Courthouse was, I'm not sure, tier six, tier seven, something like that. It's going to be tier 14 now. Oh shit, I closed it. God damn it. Okay. Let's go back. Path of exile.com. Shit, I failed. Okay, let's close this, let's close that. These are the new maps. That thing reminds me of some World of Warcraft raid. Okay, where, uh, where, where was we? Where, where we are? So, let's scroll down again. Okay, endgame maps. Uh, is there a picture of the Atlas? No, it's not. That looks actually pretty sick. I just hope there are no transportation or uh, like these kind of quests because I hate them. If if you can't decide the speed, you know, that was the thing that I was um, worried about in Delph. Like if the cart has a specific speed and you have to follow it and stay near to it that you don't get darkness damage, you know, uh, I would never run Delph. But since the faster you move, the faster your cart moves, that's good, right? So I hope these transportation things, quests, what are on top of here somewhere, uh, will act the same, right? Okay, um, new revamped skills. Alongside uh, other balance improvements, Betrayal introduces 10 or new, uh, 10 new or revamped skills across three core character archetypes. These include several completely new types of skills such as brands and banners. Okay, let's open them and let's take a look. Skill reworks. We're making changes to Ice Spear, Vortex, Ice Nova, Arctic Breath, and Tectonic Slam, increasing their power and adding interesting new behavior. Well, Vortex, nah. Ice Spear, nah. Ice Nova, uh, uh. Arctic Breath, mm -mm. and Tectonic Slam. Not any kind of interest for me. <laughs> I was hoping for a revamped Cyclone or something, so I can go back to Cycloning. But yeah. Shattering Steel. Shattering Steel is a sword and axe attack that releases a cluster of metal blades that burst in impact in an outward cone of damage. Enemies can be hit by multiple projectiles or bursts. Shattering Steel has a chance to impale, a new effect that stores some physical damage taken by the enemy and deals it again when hit. Hmm. 
I have something in my mind. What about some Cyan Slayer Juggernaut? Crit? Shattering Steel? Multiplier Impaler built. Okay, I need to write that down. Freak. I mean, this is going to probably... Shattering Steel is probably going to be my new League Starter. But wasn't there a second one? Lancing Steel. Lancing Steel is a sword and axe attack that releases an impaling projectile and summons metal blades that are fired forward in rapid succession. Enemies can be hit by multiple blades through only the central projectile applies a new impale effect. Okay, Lancing Steel or the other steel thing? I'm definitely going to play a melee build, like... Melee builds are the one, the builds that I love to play, right? So I'm definitely gonna either take the first one or the Lancing Steel uh, as my League Starter, right? Okay, Banners. Cast a banner once to carry it, weakening enemies around you while buffing the attacks of you and your allies. War Banners gain stages as you kill enemies, while Dread Banner gains stages as you impale enemies. Cast a second time to place the banner, making the effect larger and more powerful with a bonus effect. This is something I don't really want to understand or understanding. Like, you place the banner, it seems like Elrion quest, right? Where you have to save the totem, right? You place it and you have to wait till stuff is getting near the range to, so you get the effect. That would be bad. Like, I love speed builds and the majority of players are loving speed builds, herald explosions, something like that. Um, so I, why should you place the banner? Do you have it like hotkeyed and then every time you, you approach an um, um, elite pack, then you just throw the banner on top or something? But I think this is probably something, I don't know if you can permanently stack it up or is it like each map different or every login or something? So this could come in handy on Uber Elder or some end game bosses, but for mapping itself, I don't think this is a thing. No idea. Brands. Create a brand on the ground that attaches to an enemy that walks near it. Storm Brands saps nearby enemies and deals damage in an area around them, while Armageddon Brand summons destructive flaming meteors. Branded enemies drop the brand on death, letting it jump to other enemies. Cast a brand on the ground. Ah, that's... okay, okay, that's... that's a... Uh... So basically, is it like some dotting thing? Like if you have the Armor, the Armageddon brand something, you just throw it on the ground. Some mob will run over it, will get the debuff, you kill it, or at least will... Armageddon brand summons destructive flame meteors. So meteors will collapse on that target. If it dies, the, the, the brand will spread to other and then they will kill it. And so like a chain reaction or something, that could be interesting. The Winter Orb. This is like the, the one that I was saying, like the new Mirage Archer for uh, casters, right? Create an icy orb above your character when you channel, which rapidly lobs icy projectiles at nearby enemies. Channeling the skill causes it to build up in power, which starts to fade away when you stop channeling. Okay, this could be a massive, like, I don't know uh, percentage-wise what are the, the damage outputs of the thing, right? But I think, like, for bossing and preparation, when you just fully stack it up while the animation of bosses is, like, I don't know, like, Elder Guardians or something, really? Um, where you have to wait all the time and you stack this one up and it just starts shooting. I just don't like that it stops when you start, uh, st stop channeling, right? So you build it up and then you move and so it slowly gets sl uh, like weaker and weaker until it disappears, right? I would rather have some cast, it appears on your head or like winter orb support, something like that, like Mirage Archer, right? I, I think like whoever tried Mirage Archer will fall in love with this spell. You just, you know, especially on speed mapping, you, you cast a spell or at least you shoot with your bow and then your Mirage Archer sh starts to shoot projectiles as well, right? So. Yeah, that would be great, but we're gonna see how this one works out. But this is a, a self, a standalone skill, Winter Orb. I don't know, maybe it, it has like super impact on a six link or something, and it's a super boss killer. Mm. We're gonna see what the future is bringing. Okay, powerful new items. Many of the 15 new unique items in Betrayal have veiled mods, allowing you to customize the item more than ever before. Betrayal also includes for, uh, five new divination cards designed. Uh, by your supporters. Okay, so what we have here? The Crimson Storm. Physical crit, 
chance to bleed. Damage by bleed. Okay, there is going to be a lot of physical bleed impale builds going around, I think. Since impale is something new, and I think impale is something that applies on attacks, right? Not casts. Uh, there should be some, yeah, majority of, of physical builds. So I guess physical items will get a ton in price. So if you're leveling up, keep those good physical items and sell them to make easy money. Because I think... Like prediction-wise, physical thing, uh, th physical is going to be a new thing. Like the rest of salute and, and all those melee physical stuff, right? Crimson dance, maybe, whatever. Uh, Vivin sect. They have five level of socketed aura gems, increased mana reservation, all attributes, life regeneration per second for each uncorrupted item, total mana cost of skill for each corrupted item. Okay, that that makes you. Okay, so yeah, you can basically adjust your gear on this ring, right? Since it's socketed aura gems, hmm, could be anything. Like, I just have in mind like purity of fire with plus five levels. I mean, there is a cap on it, right? But it makes righteous fire and stuff like pretty easy, right? Especially on life regenerated per second, which also is in favor of righteous fire. So this could be something. Um, yeah, any. Supporter characters or something. Yeah, we're gonna see what's the uh, veil thing uh, will bring and what stats we can as well get on this one, right? And we have the solstice vi uh, vigil. Um, increased damage, life, mana regeneration, temporal chains have reduced mana reservation. This is nice. Gain shaper's presence for ten seconds when you kill a rare or a unique enemy. What is shaper's presence? No idea. Can we Google that? Shaper's presence, PUE. What I know and how what what how to make Elder and Shaper fight permanently new unique impressions presence of a shape. Maybe there is something that I don't know yet. <laughs> or maybe if I don't know, like maybe you think that I'm a noob. Okay, I am a noob, but yeah. Buy support to packs now. What do we get? We get Betrayal support to packs. The Undertaker. The Master Undertaker. Hmm. If I see that, I want to play my, my Essence Drain Trickster again. That was like so good. Essence Drain, Contagion, Blight with a Master Undertaker Supporter Pack, uh, MTX. <laughs> Soul Stealer, Master Soul Stealer. Well, I'm not a fan of like electricity and storms and some, something like that. So I would definitely go for the Master Undertaker right here. But yeah, we're going to see. Like, wow, I'm like... <laughs> I have mixed feelings about all that, that that content, right? So I can't really say, is it good, is it not good? Uh, it's the same thing in Delph, right? Delph got announced and I was like, okay, probably you're gonna play a tanky build this, the deeper you get, but um, I wasn't thinking even close to getting, uh, making like a speed Delph farming type of character. So I don't know if, if this will end up um, being like, are there like super uniques that, that will only drop on those specific encounters once you have your, um, how do you call it? Once you get your, your syndicate up or something. So there is a reason to farm it. Like for example, the owl amulet is some, uh, that enables some massive builds, right? It is expensive and owl is very hard to kill, but you get custom items basically, or at least items where you can make really based uh, on this item like builds on this item, right? So I hope there is going to be more of that stuff uh, in the new expansion. So you really have to to do it, right? Or at least you want to do it because incursion for me was in the end, um, I was just using those small incursions uh, for more loot, right? Especially farming burial chambers for additional drop cards, uh, at least drop chance for uh, divination cards, like doctor card. Uh, but I wasn't, I was skipping the temple all the time. I was opening it and then I left it again and start keep on farming because I like the small incursions more than the temple itself. Because if you really made a, a full temple run that took like 20 minutes or something, that was like not enjoyable at all. But yeah, looking forward, looking forward. Yeah, 23 days. That's going to be a big thing. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this kind of video. It's something different that I usually do, but I wanted to do a reaction video and yeah, we're gonna see if we keep on going like based on your uh, on your statements or at least your feedback on it. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.